Make that big boss less special It ain't no game, but they say I'm Welcome to the second level It's not often I find myself compelled enough to write an entire review around DLC for a game. This one's a little different though, let me explain why. If you're like me, Resident Evil 7 absolutely blew your socks off in VR. I consider it to be a seminal moment in my gaming life when I truly realised just how important VR was going to be to the future of gaming and gamer experiences. It came completely out of left field at a Sony E3 keynote and not only wowed people with the fact the entire franchise was going first person perspective but also that the entirety of the game would be available in VR. The story of Ethan was a gut-wrenching one. You were the victim of your surroundings, thrown into the middle of a psychotic family dealing with their own issues as you try and hunt down Mia, your long-lost girlfriend. Ethan's story didn't exactly end tied up in a nice bow. We had questions. Namely, why is Chris Redfield here and what happened to Lucas and Zoe? After releasing two fun but ultimately mishmashed DLC efforts by the names of Band Volumes 1 and 2, which did give a little insight into Ethan's story but not much, it was time for answers. So Capcom provided us lovingly with one free and one paid DLC to help tie up the story and showcase a different utilisation of the engine they had built from the ground up for VR. Not a Hero gave us guns, and lots of them, with a guy that knew how to use them. Chris Redfield. It finishes up Lucas's loose end with a fun saw style maze to navigate, but you actually felt more powerful than Ethan ever did by just being a core Resident Evil character and all the armoured trimmings that come with that. It has a few scares but didn't touch the intensity of the base game. So then, with Chris Redfield's presence explained and Lucas finally catching his just desserts, that leaves one loose end left. Zoe. Beautiful, wonderful, helpful Zoe. You may remember playing the base game and having to make that tough decision between saving Zoe or Mia. I honestly have no idea what happens if you choose Zoe because I'm assuming, like me, 99% of you healed the girl you came in for. Much to Zoe's dismay, of course. Chiming in at $15, End of Zoe aims to fill that gap. Did she become a monster? Did she survive? Will Ethan actually send help? Inquiring minds need to know. The best part of End of Zoe is the character you get to play as. Tell me, what kind of help comes in a helicopter gunship? You don't know what you're talking about. You don't get it. You think I don't know who you people are with all these monsters running around here. Tell me, where did they come from? For those of you thinking it was going to be Zoe, I'm sorry to inform you that is not the case. Instead, you play as Uncle Joe Baker, brother of Jack, an absolute beast of a man. Joe is the punch first and ask questions later kind of guy. All he knows is that he wants to help save Zoe. He can see her and weird people dressed in military outfits. And gosh darn it, if that ain't worth a punching, nothing is. Joe is certifiably the baddest dude on the planet, and as such decides he don't need no pesky guns to deal with those swamp critters, just his own two fists. That's right, as Joe, your only actual reusable weapon for 95% of the game is your fists. You just punch the living shit out of any molded that come your way and keep on trucking. And boy, is it satisfying. At first, I didn't really know what to think. I was nervous to take on these abominations I had grown to fear in the previous chapters with just my fists. But something about Joe makes you feel like regardless of what he's up against, everything is going to be okay. 
Occasionally, some other weapons do make a showing, but they are primarily one-use affairs, like spears for taking out the mutated swamp crocs. There is a special weapon that makes an appearance in the very last section of the game, but I won't ruin the surprise for you. Needless to say, it's fucking epic. The simplicity of it all is what I enjoyed most. There's no real puzzle solving to be done here, just trials and tribulations. Can your fists withstand the onslaught of Molded? And can you find Zoe a cure in time? Combat is ridiculously fun, including combos and head stomping. It's a far cry from the likes of Ethan whimpering in a corner somewhere hoping he isn't discovered. Out of the way, Sure, it gets a little tense in places. There are a few boss fights which might test your patience. Overall, though, it's kind of a breath of fresh air. It keeps everything you love about the atmosphere of Resident Evil 7, but basically gives you redneck one-punch man as a protagonist, which plays as awesome as it sounds. The best thing about this DLC, though, is that it is a true end to the Baker family's chapter of the Resident Evil book. It ties up all loose ends with answers and even brings back two familiar faces slash voices from the past for nostalgia's sake. If Resident Evil 7 has been as much of a game changer for you as it was for me, you owe it to yourself to pay the $15 entry fee for this final romp through the swamp. And as a personal side note, I'd like to thank Capcom for putting the time and risk in to make Resident Evil 7 one of the most complete game-changing experiences I've ever had. I cannot wait for the next chapter. Until then, go punch a monster in the face. Thanks for watching. Oh, come on. Not now, Gator. <laughs>